Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mike and Matt Show. We have a brand new episode. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We have a very special guest with us today. It is Michelle Pais, powerhouse, broker, realtor, entrepreneur, mother. Um, there's more. I know there is. There, there's, there's tons. We're going to we're gonna go through a lot here today. But Michelle, thank you so much for coming on today. There's a lot that we want to get to, and hopefully we can get started right away. Welcome to the Mike and Matt Show. Happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Michelle is actually here in the middle of her summer vacation, listeners. So give her a huge thank you <laughs> in the comments. Thank you, Michelle, for coming. But Michelle, thank you so much for spending the time here of today. Of course, of course. Um, Happy so to be here. where do we want to go, Matt? Let's start off there's, with, so, there's so much to ask. Well, I think it's important. I don't even know where we want to go. I think it's important that we give some context to the listeners of okay. the accomplishments of Michelle. You know, we're not just sitting here with anybody. We're hit, sitting here with a powerhouse. I mean, Michelle is amazing. Uh, I, I met Michelle through John Steingraber. Michael and I have been a part of the New Jersey Real Estate Social Network, and Michelle's been a big part of it because she's the owner of Signature Realty, New Jersey. Hit the stats. Give All right. Good, you're the stat man. Give Some incredible the accomplishments. The Michelle Pais Group, this is Michelle's group within Signature Realty, has eclipsed over $1.5 billion. That's with a B. Billion Billions. with B in volume sold for real estate. Over 4,000 homes sold. I don't know if I've ever seen 4,000. Not 100,000. 4,000. <laughs> That's, <a lot>. yeah. <laughs> That's an entire neighborhood. And she's also, and this is a great one, she's in the top half of the top 1% in the country as a realtor, Michelle, you're incredible. Oh, you're sweet. Thanks, guys. Featured so, everywhere here. Um, Hang on. No, wait, there's more stats. There's <laughs> more. There's more. You're, you're, you're She's featured also, in the New York Times, featured in the Wall Street Journal, uh, Forbes, and is also the, the co-host of 24-Hour Flip on A&E. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, you have to. Yeah. We were just Michelle. talking about it before we started. I loved it. It's really funny. <laughs> Did you guys so, like the show? Did you watch it? Absolutely. Yes. It's Every really episode, funny. Tell the truth. Every I'm episode. We went, we went to the grand, we went to the, the screening the of screening, the first episode. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Thank you. I, I enjoy it because we're in the business. So I enjoy it because of the, the, the house stuff. But I just thought it was actually just hilarious. <laughs> it's actually, it's so funny. Yeah. That it makes you like you just gotta be like, what are these guys gonna get up to next week? Because yeah. it's true. <laughs> and you know what? We're not we're not acting. I mean, this is who we are. So if you think we're funny, thanks. But this is <laughs> we're just interacting. It's normal. This is what we do day in day out. I mean, we sell real estate, right? We renovate. We buy. We just you know, it's we're we're in our space. We're in our element. So it comes very natural to us. Um, yeah, and it was you, fun. It was a lot of fun. You and John do a great job. Your Thank synergy. You. You know, the way that John handles the construction, ra um, you know, basically corrals all of the subs and everyone getting everyone together to finish the project within 24 hours. And then you with the incredible job that you do to put that house on the market, get it in, uh, hopefully an offer accepted over asking. It's amazing. I will say if that's how you guys are just every day, that's a fun day. That's uh, a fun place to work. Yeah, well, we don't do that every day. I mean, there's, you know, there's only enough uh, hours during the day. I mean, we are busy with other stuff. So the show... Um, the show was fun, you know, it, we, we filmed for about five, six months. Um, so right now we're on a break. We're just waiting, um, to start next season. We don't know when that's going to happen yet, but I'm enjoying my break. I'm not going to lie to you because it is a <laughs> lot of work. What people don't realize is just how much work it goes into this. Um, you know, I've always, I thought I always wanted to be on TV and now that we're here, we're like, oh shoot, we didn't realize it was going to be like this. Like we are filming 24 seven nonstop and, you know, just, you know, you're filming hours and hours and hours to, to just to make a 45 minute episode, a 50 minute episode. So a lot of the things don't make it. Um, but you know, nonetheless, it is, is a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. It is like, a lot. I just want to sell another 4,000 houses. I'd rather do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a lot too. <laughs> Cause we know lending at alpha, it typically will take anywhere between six to nine months. And you guys are not just doing it in six to nine days. You're doing it over a weekend. Yeah, twenty yeah, twenty four hours to twelve hour days, and it's real. Like what you see is is legit. No no BS. No, this is this is a business model that John came up with. You know, six years maybe now, and he was just so frustrated um, with the whole process of buying homes. You know, waiting six to nine months to carrying costs and renovation and then closing costs. It's just it was so much that he came to me. He's like, I'm giving up. I'm done. Like I'm not renovating. I'm like, you know what? You're probably better off. Like just. 
this isn't worth it. And then he's like, and then I, but I have an idea. I don't want to give it up. Why don't I just do it in a shorter period of time? And so the whole 24 hour model came up and I thought he was absolutely out of his mind. Like who, how do you get a renovated <laughs> house in 24 hours? Like it took, took me 24 months to do my closet. Um, say, I can barely get the plumber to come to the I, toilet. I wanna, I wanna, you, guys are having, you guys are having a glass of wine one night and he's like, you know, Let's let's flip a house in twenty four hours. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like a great happen. idea. Let's reduce yeah. our holding costs. We're gonna oh do it God. in a day. In a day, and then you get to sell it. And then I get really to sell it. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I have hours to sell it. Right? Yeah. I usually it usually sells during um, the Sunday open house. So it's it's a lot, but it's fun and that's awesome. Um, it's challenging for sure. We don't we every day is a different day. We just don't know what we're getting ourselves into. And he he actually he's the, he goes out and he finds these houses. I don't represent him on the buy. Like that's one rule that we have. Like I am not. He is like the worst client. <laughs> uh, and I you know I set I represent him on the sale, um, but on the purchase he finds his own stuff. I mean he's been in the business for you know I've been doing this for twenty years. He's probably been doing it just as long. So he you know he's he knows what he's doing and he's finding houses everywhere. And half the time I don't even know where he's driving me to. Like there was one time on the show we were all the way up in almost Philadelphia. Like it was still New Jersey, but it was no idea where we were. But you know that's John. Always an adventure when I get in the car. That's the real behind the velvet rope. Yeah, he's the worst client. The worst. That's my husband. It's he's my the worst husband. client. Yes, 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 yes. So so we hit all the big like. I mean, I feel like we could expound, but you know, let's let's go back now. Now that we know all of the the big accolades, all the things that you've done, which is amazing, take us back. Like, sh- tell us, like, you know, it's a every every journey to have all of the things we just mentioned is a journey, right? So, how did we how did we get here? How did oh you get? How, you know, um, how, how did you know? Start wherever you want. Mm, uh, you time know. flies when you're having <laughs> yeah. fun, right? You know, I'm a big believer. If you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. Um, and real estate is it's a passion of mine. I've, I've been in the game for for 20 years, a little over 20 years now. Um, how did I get here? It started off with, uh, you know, uh, going to school, unsure of what exactly I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer and then getting my real estate license completely as a backup plan. Um, you made I never the right th- choice. I never thought I would, you know. You made the right career. choice. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to be a lawyer too. <laughs> you did. <laughs> that was the wrong choice. Was it? I don't know. I don't know. Looking back, I mean... Maybe just, I think, I feel like everyone should, you know, have a law degree just to know. <laughs> you don't have to practice it, but, you know. Does watching Suits have... count as a law degree? <laughs> no. Or, no? No. I've been starting to watch that show a little bit. Yeah, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> nice try, man. All nice right. try. Maybe Law and Order. I'll give you that. Yeah. Maybe Law and Order. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a, I'm, I'm a sucker for those types of shows. So, um, <laughs> but real estate, again, was, was, it was a backup plan. I ended up working out. Um, and, you know, I just so happened to marry and fall in love with somebody that has the same passion as I do. So it makes it a lot easier when you're with somebody who's your partner, not only in life, but also uh, in business. So for sure, we are, you know, we're, we make a really, really good team. Everything started um, with the pipe dream. You know, I want to I wanna sell X amount of houses and I kind of reverse engineer my, my plan. And then I was really, really good at it, which at 21, 22, you kinda, it's hard to really know what you wanted to do. But I think it was right around that time that I, I was destined to do this. Uh, fast forward, um, now we have eight, almost eight. We're opening up a couple of offices as, as, as we speak. One in Red Bank, by the All right. way. Represent. Um, yeah. We are going to be up the street from you guys. Um, And uh, so it's going to be, we're going to have a total of about eight offices and we're expanding, we're growing. We have almost 500 agents now. Um, We are all all up and down the Garden State. Um, Our goal is to have an office in every county. Um, And, you know, we have a lot of good things happening at Signature. That's an incredible thought, just real fast, right? You have eight offices. You're doing all these different things. You said you started 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people, 20 years into a career, are over not it. even, <laughs> not even, not even close to something like that. Really? Yeah. Think, think about I it. Guess. Think of it just like the average person, right? Like, you know, they mm-hmm. come out of college, and 20 years later, they're in their 40s. Yeah. They, maybe they've worked a few different jobs. 20 years later, you've opened eight offices. How many uh, agents do you have? Almost 500. 500 agents. Yeah. Selling over four thousand houses. Yeah. Like. Yeah. That, sometimes it's hard to like let that sink in. Like the, just the sheer accomplishment that 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 is. You know, well, because people don't do it. Well, most people in life they start their job, they go to college, 
They get their job. They do their nine to five for 30, 40 years. They retire yeah. and they just, it's mediocrity just, from start yeah. to finish. One thing with you and John is you never settle. No. You're always working on something. We, and that's the thing. And sometimes I need to just chill out because I exhaust my own self. I get exhausted just thinking about the stuff we want to do. And we're, we're entrepreneurs at heart. Like we really are entrepreneurs. And um, I think with us is that we, we're so ambitious and that's what it is. And we, we don't need to be held accountable. Um, we're just self-driven people and, uh, I can't explain it. And, you know, at sometimes I'll say to myself, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to not do anything and just <laughs> chill out and just hang out on the beach. And, and, you know, I'll be on vacation for, for a few days and I'll just get bored. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you feel like you go crazy. I'll go nuts. And I just, it's just not who I am. Obviously now it's a little different for me. I am a mom and my daughter is my priority. She's my number one. Um, she's three years old, but then she's going to be start going to school. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have a little bit more time on my hands and I just, I'm just not the type of that girl that can just sit around at home and do nothing. I have to always be doing something. It motivates me. It excites me. And I don't do it for the money at all. Um, I just do it. I'm just, it's, it's a passion, you know? You know, we, we've talked about it a few times on the podcast where we've had different guests on and we talk about the thrill of the deal. Yeah. You know, true. and more and more, every time I ask that question to people, they always say like, Exactly what you just said. It's not about the money. It's about what we're doing. So what was that, you know, that moment, right? So you came and you said you were at college. You just, just you, you wanted to do this. What was that moment where you're like, ooh, this is, I really like that. I really like the feeling of selling that house. I like the feeling of getting that check. And, you know, like what, what, was, the, what was that thrill, right? What's that part of the deal that really catches you? And if you could bottle it up and just have it all the time, like that's the thing that would, would take you everywhere. The thrill of maybe getting, you know, when you're, in, I do so many things, but when I'm, for example, uh, I am a listing agent. Um, I focus on, on primarily, you know, listings. And so when I go up against, you know, three or four or five big heavy hitter agents and I walk out with the listing, I mean, that to me is probably the most exciting. Getting the check is, believe it or not, is secondary, if not, you know, uh, I just don't get excited over closing. I get excited about maybe the competition and just beating out the competition. Keep in mind too, is that we're independently, we're an independent broker and we're one of the top teams in the entire state. And we don't, you know, we don't have, um, you know, a 50 or 60 year brand behind us. So we are, we are our own brand. And the fact that you're able to compete against these, you know, ginormous companies that have been around for so many years and still walk out with the business like that to me um is what it, it's what gets me excited still every day but it's not just that I mean I've been again I've been doing this for so long it's like I've I rang I don't know how many doorbells and you know getting in this thing is just it's you know it's just, I've been there done that it still excites me I'm not gonna say it's it, it doesn't excite me but there's so much more stuff that I want to do for example right now what's gonna what excites me is uh, growing signature. So for the last several years, John and uh, the team have been really focused on the growth of signature, and they have been doing a phenomenal job. I mean, we when when John joined forces with me, we were thirty agents. Now we're five hundred. Right? Uh, we had one office. Now we're we're gonna we have eight, or you know, soon to have eight. Um, but now I am. I'm starting to get into the growth of Signature as well, helping the guys out um, and just really taking it to a whole other level. So that is 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 my is going to be a new passion that I that I'm excited to kind of dive I feel in. Like it's like, I feel like it's the same thrill, different thing, right? Yeah. It's, it's for you is like beating someone else for that list mm -hmm. for the listing, right? And now it's it's still the competition part of it too, <laughs> right? It's like it's it's the same thing, different story. You're, yeah, you, you don't realize it always. Like I have this problem myself, right? Like or I don't realize that the thing I want is the thing I always want. And I always think it's something different. Yeah. But what you're saying is the same thing. Like you want those, you want those eight locations. You want, you know, I want the 20 locations, right. You want all locations. the agents. It's, I want, you know, 10% you wanna, of New Jersey market share. Like that's you wanna what we want. You want to go toe to toe. You want to beat everybody out. Like <laughs> you want to be across the street from the other brokerage and be like, I'm just going to beat you and you're going to, you're going to move out. So that's I have a, I have a question. Cause what you were just talking about is a perfect segue in a world where competition is more fierce than ever. And in one of the most active real estate markets in the country, we're here in the Northeast, in the New York metro area. Tell me more about how you continue to separate yourself. You were just saying it before. You're not some big brand company, although you are becoming that brand, and which is incredible. But 
How do you continue to separate yourself from all of this fierce competition? We do things very differently, right? We are not the cookie cutter uh, average brokerage. Um, actually, we're so much more than that. Within our brokerage, uh, we teach agents how to become business owners, right? Um, we teach them how to market themselves. Um, let's face it, I am the queen of marketing. Like, you know, I, I'm very much, I'm very passionate about it. We have a television show, for God's sake. Like, so, you know, anything that we're all about getting as many eyeballs on the brand, and I have spent a lot of money doing that and a lot of time doing that. So we're teaching agents, you know, how to become your own brand, um, how to leverage the brand. Um, we consider ourselves a marketing company that just specializes in selling real estate, right? And, and you know, while giving the client a, a five-star concierge-like service, uh, we also have a ton of services all under one roof. So we are literally a one-stop shop. If you need, um, you know, your kitchen redone, we, we have a concierge department, construction concierge. If you need help packing and moving, we have a... a uh, a moving service department. If you need someone to come design your house, well, we have that as well. Um, if you need staging, we have that arm as well. So think about you know all the services you can possibly think of all under one roof. So we are so much more than a real estate brokerage. Um, and I think that's what makes us very, very different. Um, we tend to also appeal for whatever reason to the you know, to the entrepreneurs and to the younger generation, I think maybe they look up to us and, and maybe we're more relatable to, to them. Um, I mean, we, you know, we don't discriminate if you, if you're hungry and if you want to, if this is a career that you're, that you're really passionate about, um, we're here, we're going to help you. We have a tremendous amount of training. I mean, training is probably number one, training and support at Signature Realty. But we have so many other things that other companies, um, they don't have. Um, because it's, again, it's not just real estate. So to have all these different arms all under one roof is pretty powerful. I feel like the training is a big deal. Huge. You know, you know, you know we I've been doing this for 10 years. And before this, I, w I worked for a lawyer in, in real estate mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, you know, and I feel like realtors, you know, a lot of these big national brands, it's all about get a lot of agents, put them out there, just turn them into a farm. They don't really need to know much. You just want to, you know, push them along, have them find listings. And I feel like what you're saying about teaching them how to basically be business owners, that it's such a different approach, right? Because the other approach from these other places is no, you work for whatever the big names are, right? You work for them, right? You don't work for yourself. Like, and I think that's such an interesting approach. And I know a lot of your agents, right? From, from, from my time in the business and they are very passionate about what they do for themselves. You know, it always starts with who they are and their part of Signature, which is interesting, but it, it makes Signature so much more prescient about the fact that they're part of Signature. Like they have these huge brands and I fo following them on Instagram, like they are powerhouses. And you're like, how did, ever, how did all of them learn how to do it? And it's these trainings, it's giving them the tools to really promote themselves and promote the brand at the same time, which is just such a different approach. Well, all you have to do is look at the leadership. Yeah. And what you and 100%. John, what you and John do, you pour into them. I, yeah. I've been at the signature trainings. Yeah, I've been at NJ Resin, where the turnout, where you have half the room or some of your agents, the support that they reciprocate with, and you can just see it when you when you have that type of leadership, it just goes downhill. It's your, you're so right because if you guys couldn't convey it, if you couldn't inspire them to want to do it, they wouldn't. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work, and, it, and we're not for everybody, right? I mean, we we we, we just aren't, and it's okay. Um, you know, uh, we just here's the thing: John and I both came from nothing. You know, we weren't handed the brokerage didn't come to us. Our parents weren't in the business, um, so we created this ourselves. And being able to, I think we are inspirational. I think people do look up to us because they can, they, they, maybe what they see in us is that, oh my God, I can do it too. Like we, you know, we, we've, we started from the bottom. We've uh, found our way and we're still growing. We're still making mistakes. We're, you know, we're not perfect by any means, but um, we teach that, you know. Um, for example, I am, you know, I'm a big lister. I'm a listing agent. So, and the fact that I own the company, who better yet to, to help these guys when it comes to, you know, going out there and, and getting the business. I'm in it. I'm in the trenches every single day. I'm not just sitting behind a desk and saying, do this, do this, do that. I'm in it. So I'm able to take my experiences and, and pass it on to my team, which is, is important. Absolutely. And the, it, the difference it makes. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible just because nobody's giving that time anymore. Exactly. You know, and I think that's a big difference. And you're talking about why you appeal, I think, to the younger generation. I think it's a lot of things that you just said you're offering. You're offering concierge services, you guys have a great story 
and you're putting the time in. And I think everybody can feel that. And I think we're in a generation where they, they like, they like service, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Our generation, my generation, we, we love I like service. service. We love, I mean, well, I'm all about service. Yeah, it, you know, <laughs> and, and I think that it's just, it, it's something that calls to them, right? Because these other groups aren't giving the service. Yeah. And it's right, so it's like, it's such a combination. You say you're a marketing company, you're a marketing company and you're a service company at the same time. You're, you're, it's both pieces. And I think that's, maybe that's the secret sauce, right? I don't know. I don't know what the secret, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a secret sauce. We're trying saying. to figure it out because we need it for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. We're, I guess what would be advice that you would give to anyone, whether you're a business owner, you're looking to get into real estate, maybe you're looking to join forces with Signature and you want to build your brand. What are some of the tips that you would give to somebody who's looking to market, build a brand? What are the things that you need to include? Um, you know, brand building is something in any business, right? How to build a brand. I think you have to, uh, make sure that you have the foundation built first. So in other words, don't start hiring without really having your foundation. Don't go out there, you know, starting, you know, putting your face on billboards or without having, you know, a, a decent site with reviews and things like that. So when I say, you know, when it comes to brand building, I think, uh, having a very strong foundation is everything people will, um, you know, they'll go online and what they see is what, what they see and they'll decide to pick up the phone and call you or not. So I always say start from the very bottom, build those solid foundation, get those reviews. And you also have to invest in yourself. So too many people just, they don't invest. They invest, um, you know, they think it's a waste of money or they don't see a return on investment right away. I mean, this is, brand building is a long, it's, it's a long game. You're not going to be able to, you know, there's no secret um, magic pill that you can take or, you know, this one thing that you can do to, 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 to turn, to turn the needle and all of a sudden have, have magic happen. There's, there's a lot of things that you have to do. What I teach is, you know, not everything, like for example, for me, I'm big on, um, direct mail. Now I, as much as I, you know, I scream it and I say it direct mail, direct mail, direct mail, um, people give up. They'll do it once or twice and they get no call and they, you know, they spend, you know, X amount of dollars. You're like, this isn't worth it for me. But again, it's persistency. It's consistency. It's constant in front of people. So you can't just try something and give it up if it doesn't work. I mean, you're in it for the long haul. Um, when it comes to sales, I can tell you a little secret that I always used to do. I, I would always take 25% of my check and I would reinvest it back into the business. A lot of people don't. The best investment you can make is in yourself. There's, it's not a stock market. It's not, you know, a CD or, um, you know, buying a car. It's just the best investment investment you can you can make is really in your business you know something you said just a, a little bit ago you were talking about making mistakes mm -hmm. right and I think you know you, you said that you make mistakes all the time yeah and that you course. still do and I think part of all that is is what you're saying and it's something that I get from it and hearing you say it was very interesting is people are afraid they're afraid to fail, fail at something yeah. they're afraid to make mistakes yeah how did that, did, did any of that influence what you're doing? Like, like how many times did it not work before it worked and, and you had to keep at it? And, and yeah. what would you tell people who like in that moment where they're starting off and it's, they're not getting the traction or they didn't, yeah. they missed the listing or they did a thing like, how do you keep somebody focused? How do you keep yourself focused in those moments when keep them motivated too? it just falls yeah. apart? It's, it's tough. It's tough when you don't, if here's the thing with real estate, um, and I'm speaking just for the agents out there because they're, this is relatable. You don't get a salary, so it's commission-based. When I started, I had a job, and I was doing it part-time, right? So Because I don't come from a family of wealth or, any, or influence or anything of that nature. So I had to have a full-time job, and real estate was my side hustle. Uh, if you're in it and this is your, f and you don't have income coming in, it's going to be tough. Most people will freak out and leave the business. So I would always say, have a cushion, have a, a good six months saved up just in case it doesn't work out. Um, but if you fail, I say, get up and try again. If you fail, try harder. You know, you're going to get maybe 10 no's before you get that one yes. And when you get that one yes, that one yes can turn into two yeses, three yeses, four yeses. So if you're not doing it, it's, you're probably not you don't want it, you're, you probably don't want it that much. You know, you have to really want it. And I think that goes with anything in life. If you really want it and you're determined um, and you, you wake up and this is all you think about and you realize, it just, you know, I, I also think that the people that, you know, rise to the top are, they really want it. 
and they 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 take they don't take no as an answer. When I started, I was 21 years old. I didn't even own a home. <laughs> you know, like, here I am. So I didn't have any. I, I didn't know anybody. I came from. I lived in Portugal. Mm-hmm. So I came to New Jersey from Portugal. I mean, talk about you know not knowing anybody. If you are born here, if you went to school here, you already have an upper hand because you have um, friends, you have peers, you have you know knowledge of an area. You lived here. You know, I didn't. I didn't have any of that. So I literally started by knocking on doors, introducing myself, and, and just hustling. While my friends were partying at DJ's, I was uh, <laughs> you know, doing, going to open houses on Sundays. So it's just, it's what you want. And now in my 40s, I don't have to work uh, anymore. But, but you've earned it. Yeah. You yeah. put in the time. I put in the time. I, well, I've always wanted to be able to, you know, first of all, I always said to myself, I wanted to be a mom at, like, I, later in life. I never wanted to be a mom younger in life. Um, well, part of me is because I didn't find the right person, but also because I wanted to be settled so that when I did have a kid, I wanted to be present, and that was very important to me. And luckily with Maddie, I can do that now. Um, but work is, is not work. It's, it's fun. If I, I think I would hate my life if I had a you know, do a nine to five and, 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 and not enjoy it. Like that wouldn't be fun. Um, I, I don't know if I'd ever be able to, to, to do that. Um, clearly, (laughs) um, but I've always wanted to, you know, to get to the point in life where, you know, in my forties and be able to say, you know what, I, I'm free freedom. And it's not about how much money you have in the bank. It's just being able to do whatever you want and not have to, you know, um, clock in and clock out. What you said about putting in the time, it just speaks, it, it's, it speaks volumes about, you were talking about marketing, being consistent, having that foundation with your brand. You can't do this overnight. And so many people, you, you're excited about something, you get all excited about an idea and it fizzles out. And I think what I'm hearing is that, one, you have to be accepting of failure. I think failure is a, is a huge, it, it, people think that failure is actually going to derail you. I think failure actually points you in the right direction because once you fail, then you realize, okay, going in this direction, it's not getting me where I want to be. It's going to point me back in this other direction. Let me try this. It actually is rerouting you to the right path. But having that grit mentality and not quitting because so many people, they just give up. Yeah. And like you said, the word consistency and persistent um it's just and now and you're passion yeah and now you're seeing the fruits of all that labor yeah and you deserve it yeah well and thank so you many, some people uh, think you know I, I had a someone made a comment uh this morning it's, i'm not gonna even say who but you know they said oh michelle um you know she's just basically you know they're looking at me and they're just like oh i want what she has but they don't nobody knows what it's like but isn't that amazing you that haven't somebody, earned the right but yeah isn't like, that nobody wants somebody, to put somebody, here. somebody says i want what you have but they don't know what you did no, to get there. Like yeah. you, just, you just got here. For 20 years. Exactly. So I was doing some research yeah. on you, and I, I, take a, <laughs> and I did some yeah. background, and you've uh, been hustling for 20 yeah. years. Not in your that. first year, you sold 28 homes Yeah. in your first year. My first, and, but at that time, it was harder because we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have social media. We didn't have Zillow. We didn't, have, we didn't pay for leads. We didn't have any of that. We had a newspaper ad and a telephone, and that's it. So it was hard. <laughs> I think, and I think, you know, we're going back to a generational thing. I think what we see is just a lot of people not willing to put the work in. They, they look around and they go, ooh, someone's making a lot of money. That must be easy. And then they get to it and they're like, wait a second, why am I not making all the money? And like, listen, you got to work. And you got to take risks. working hard. And you got to take risks. And, and uh, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not a, you know, you're, you're not going to get into real estate and become rich the next day. That's not going to happen. So for any of those that are, are, are listening to this, like, I'm going to get into real estate because I want to become a millionaire. No, let me just stop you right there. Uh, anything that you do, you have to, you know, it's your own business. And that is why we teach people how to become their own, the CEOs of their own business. We teach them how to become a business owner um, because it is important. This career, you are, it's your own business. It's like having a storefront right? You open up a shop tomorrow. Well, who's going to know your shop is there? How is your shop going to be successful? You have to put in the air. You have to invest in yourself. You have to market. You have to advertise. You have to get out there. Same thing in this business. So um, there's no such thing as, uh, you know, making it overnight. I think those that are doing very well, they've earned the right. And uh, I, you know, I, I, I applaud those that have taken on the risks that, you know, 
that are still in the game that are con- cuz I know what it's like. It's ex- you know, it's to run a company, to run to do your it's expensive. It's not cheap. Um but you know, the secret is after every sale, take a little portion of that and don't go out, don't go buy those, you know, fancy red bottom shoes, invest back into your business. Yeah. How many people over the last couple of years when we, it was almost like the gold rush for, for real estate, 2020, 2021, 19, 18. I mean, we had a huge run up in the market Mm -hmm. and now things are starting to And I hated it by the way, guys. (laughs) I hate it. I hate this market. I don't like this market. This one or or the run up? I, I, you know, this market, yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 it's challenging because we have no inventory, right? Mm-hmm. So we have a ton of buyers. I want to buy homes. Me being one of them, I'm looking for, you Me know, too. and I'm just, there's no inventory. <laughs> um, so it's challenging because you get people that are very frustrated, you know, buyers are just tired of just, you know, looking for that home and not never, and just being bit out and, and it's just, I feel for them. I really, really do. I, I, I'm not a fan of this market at all. Um, I like, I don't like the buyer's market. I don't like the seller's market. I like the normal market, so right? I the normal a- market where interest rates are where they are. There's a home. There's a buyer for every home, not 30 buyers for every home. <laughs> so what you were just talking about, golden handcuffs, Mike and I spend many days talking about and pontificating and we are. We're in a very, very unique time. Interest rates are going up. They went up faster than they've ever gone up in history in the last year and a half. It's we the have highest has been since 2001. Inventory shortage right now across the country, whether you're in the Northeast, Southeast, across the country, as sparse as it's been in years. It's going to be years before we can ever get enough supply to meet the demand. With people not wanting to sell their homes because they have such historic low interest rates, and wanting to maybe go out and sell their home because they can get top dollar, but now they have to be on the other side of it. Now they have to be a buyer and deal with the higher interest rates, deal with that competition, other buyers you know, going for the exact same home. What, what are you seeing in the market right now? Baby boomers are the ones that are, are selling. Uh, they usually, they don't, you know, they probably don't have a mortgage on their home. So, and they're moving either out of state, uh, they're going into independent living, assisted living, or they're renting. That's what, that's, that's who I think right now, uh, the, ma- the majority of the populations are, are, are the baby boomers. Uh, at least my, I could just speak for my experience. My clients, majority of them are, 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 are downsizing and they're just, you know, packing up and leaving the state or again, uh, can de- just going into something smaller. Um, you are seeing those that, you know, like you said, you're in a two, 3% interest rate and, um, you know, yeah, your home is worth all this money, but now you're buying a home that's probably going to cost you more and you're getting a 7% interest rate. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So unless you're moving out of state, uh, you're downsizing, uh, you're just not seeing people move from one area, selling their house in one town to move up to that same. You're just not seeing that. That's where the shortage of inventory is happening. So I think until interest rates kind of go down, which I don't know if they are. Uh, I mean, there has to be something has to give, right? Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. I mean, it's been it's been a long time. I would never in a million years thought that we'd be, you know, year three. <laughs> are you seeing a lot of people trading up or, or maybe even looking to downsize aside from your baby boomers? Downsizing, yes. Trading up. Mm, I think if I think cash buyers, yes. I, I have, we work with a lot of cash buyers and we're seeing them, okay, they're selling their home, they're buying a bigger home. Um, interest rates does not affect them whatsoever, right? So you're seeing a lot of that. You're also seeing second uh, homes, um, people buying second homes like down the shore. I'm seeing a lot of that you know, vacation homes. Do you see any of those cash buyers slowing down, right? So we saw when COVID started, every, you know, everybody raced out of the, the cities, you know, affluent people were mm-hmm. bidding like crazy, yeah. putting down cash, like you can't compete. But, you know, eventually those people run out, right? Are we, they're is slowing that slowing down. down or is it yes. still just like, no, no, there those are, are cash slowing buyers down. everywhere. The higher end market, higher end five, six, seven million, you're seeing, you're definitely seeing a, a slowdown there. Is it more just everybody who bought a house has a house, or is it just people ran out of money? Like ran out of money. Is that <laughs> what it is? Okay. I don't know. No, you you are seeing that though. That that you are seeing, but in the, um, in the uh, you know the mid entry level mid market, it's just it's it's crazy. So what would you tell somebody? Like you have you know someone's going to come to you. They're listening to this. Maybe they're inspired by you. They call up, be like, I want to buy a house. What do I have? Like like you know this is where we're at, and you're saying we need to wait for interest rates a hundred percent prices have to come with it. 
what are you telling them? To, what are you telling somebody right now if they want to get into an entry or mid home? Right? And like, what I would you tell them? I say buy the house. Uh, buy the house. Let me tell you. Yeah. No, That's buy the yeah. house because she's not wrong. No, buy the house, and I'm in it. I'm looking for a home, right? So buy the house because, and this is going to sound so cheesy and corny, but marry the home, date the rate, right? Yeah. Uh, you've heard that, right? It's so cheesy. Someone said it's it. Not cheesy. It's true. You know, if you find something that you love, uh, a home is a home. You shouldn't look at it as an investment. It's your home, right? So buy the home. Interest rates will come down. When they come down, you refinance. You know, Would you, you tell somebody to buy a house they don't love right now? No. 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 Don't settle. No, I, well, I don't like the settling. We I don't hear, sell anything. So We hear a lot of people on the other side of this, right? We hear a lot of people like, if you find it, buy it. Uh, if it exists, buy it. I'm no. like, I don't know. I don't know if I feel that way. No, well, I, I guess, I guess looking at it from a, buy, a retail buyer or an investor perspective. No, yeah, talk about retail buyer. Like they're, mm, you know, so, I, don't, mm, I don't know. I hear, no. I hear both sides of this argument. Now, find a home you love, you know, always, in any market. There, listen, yes, there's a shortage of inventory, but, um, you know, uh, there will be more. Uh, and homes are coming on the market every day. Um, the difference is that you're just, you have less inventory and you have more buyers, uh, right, because of the less inventory. So you are going to be, in some cases, you may be up against a few other buyers, but. And this is why coming to a group like yours, to coming to Signature, from everything you've already told us so far, I think is really interesting, right? Because if you're looking to buy a home, you need to go to the people who are capturing the listings. Like if you want a house, right? And I think that that's a part that like, it, it's glossed over, right? Like, you know, think about it. Like you just, you just told us, we just spent like a half hour talking about your story, how you fight for that listing, how you get them, why people give to you, the services you provide. And I think people need to make that right now. That's, probably one of the bigger decisions you have to make, right? When the going was good, we were just talking about 18, 19, before COVID and COVID made things weird, right? Like, not that you, not that it was easy. I'm not going to say that. It was, it was easy to sell a house or find a house, but like you could probably go to a brokerage and there was a lot of inventory, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now you have to, you have to make that real conscious thought. You can't yep. just go, oh, there's a, there's a realtor, you know, at, on Main Street in my town, I'm just going to go give them a buzz and tell them I want to buy a house. Like yeah. this is now a part that I think people really have to think about. Like who has the listings? Right. Who's getting the properties? Right. Who's not just who's getting the properties, who's getting the properties, I, the kind of properties that I want. Right. right. And the towns that you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think sure. you really have to think about that and you have to think about, well, why are they getting them? Right. Right. And cause they've been in the game for X amount of years and they're investing in themselves and in marketing and, relationships and they're doing a good job and they're getting repeat referrals and they don't give yeah. up and I can go on and on and on and on and on and on. And on, and on. But just telling people who are listening like, hey, like you need to, if you're looking to buy a house, you need to think about that as much as your rate, as much as, you know, all the different bits and bobs you want in your house. You have to say like, if I want to be in this town and I want a house that's this big and I, and I don't necessarily want to wait five years to find one, choosing the right agent right now, choosing the right group to go with is a super important moment. It's a yeah. really important choice. Just look, just think about it. We, we talk about uh, at Alpha being better, you know, working with a better lender, being a better investor. But you look at your group, better service, like you were talking about. You guys have better marketing, better team, right? You guys carry that same, you know, the same idea that we carry. And you're, you're absolutely, you hit it right on the, on the head, Mike, about team. Because if you want to find it, find the people that are doing it on a daily basis mm -hmm. or putting in the time, and then you'll find what you're looking for. And I would say, and going back to that, you know, if you find a home that you're like, eh, and I always say don't settle, but be open to buying a home that, that, um, that needs work right now, right? Because too many of us just want something that's turnkey. Um, but it's, it's, it's okay if you have the, the bones are there, the locations there, the town's there, everything checks the boxes, but you know what? It needs to be updated. We got you. Give us a call. <laughs> right. well, like you said, you're offering, that's a service that not Another everybody's service. offering, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah. We have, listen, we have, yeah. you can buy this house. And then if you want, you can talk to our group over here and we can figure out how to help you upgrade Renovate. that house while yeah. you're living Re in it and doing resources, it. better resources. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm doing, I'm looking for the same thing. I don't want to see a turnkey home because most you're of paying time, too much for it. You're paying too much <laughs> for it, or you walk into it and you want to change something right off the bat. I want to be able to have my fingerprint on it, and I'm looking for something locally here in the New Jersey area. I would love to use maybe like an FHA loan option. Uh, hard money probably wouldn't make sense for somebody like me as an owner-occupant, but knowing that you guys have those types of resources, 
you know, it's definitely you know, something that's very comforting. You know, um, you were talking before about your daughter and, you know, being at this point in your life. And I have a question because, you know, a lot of people look at real estate in general, especially the investing side of it, right, as a big boys club. And, you know, I, I, I mean, look, Matt and I are sitting here, right? You know, it's, but, you know, tell me how important it is to you that what you do, right, the, the empire you've built, right, and having a daughter and being able to, you know, the way you were talking about being a mom was like really, really hit me. Tell me what that feels like being a role model for her, like saying to yourself, like, listen, push these, push these boys out of the way, right? <laughs> like, like, come on, like, and, and the hard work, you know, you were, we were also talking about hard work. All those pieces go together. Like, yeah. Tell me how, is, is that important to you? So like, important. That... And I've always wanted a girl. Uh, my husband wanted a boy. I said, no, we're having a girl. And now You willed it into existence. And now he, uh, he's so happy we have a girl. But, you know, being a woman is my superpower. Being a mom to a female, uh, I want to show her and I want to lead by example that we have an upper hand in the sense that, you know, we can, we're, we're better nurturers. Uh, we are more intuitive and, 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 you know, we run, we give birth to babies and to businesses at the same time. Okay. I like that. <laughs> That's, uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> That's important to me. I think, um, you know, often, t- I mean, I know, I don't know with me growing up, I was always told, and I'm a Portuguese Portuguese woman. My both my parents are Portuguese. I was always told that have an education, but get married, have kids, and you know, and and that's your role. Your role is in the kitchen, and you know, uh, your role is to be, you know, a wife, a mom. Um, no one ever taught me or said to me, you know, you should be a wife, a mom, and a boss. Um, so I think it's important. And, and nowadays, you know, you're seeing so many women that are just badasses they you know they're bosses and I just I love to see that so that's something that my daughter is going to grow up knowing that both mommy and daddy are rooting for her and we want her to be the best version of herself and yeah we want her to first of all do whatever she wants to do but being able to 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 instill those things that um that we're very passionate about and um is that a key motivator for whatever you're doing next my daughter I always have her in mind in everything I do like always um and uh it's it's very motivating someone said to me once um oh my god you're you're gonna have a kid you're done that's it like right like that's it it's over you're you're gonna forget about the business you're just but no actually having a daughter if anything it actually gave me more I'm more inspired I'm more motivated I'm more driven and I think it a lot of it is because of her I just you know I want I want her to see mom and dad um, happily, right? Happy, and we have a great marriage. So that's um, so obviously she sees the love and everything else. Um, but most, but also that you know we work. Uh, we 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 don't just you know things aren't just given to us, right? We we work for everything that we have, and I think it's really really important. And we are also raising her with that. We're not raising her with the silver spoon at all. We're teaching her. Um, uh, we're humbling her. Let's put it that way. We're very um, strategic in how we're raising her because we just don't. We don't want her to be a spoiled kid. Maybe when she was a little one, she, we spoiled her a little <laughs> bit. You know, she's young. She's not going to remember anything. <laughs> but uh, it's important that she sees um, the world and that not everybody um, lives the same way. So, no, I think that's teaching her to be a good person. I think that's incredibly important. Leveling the playing field. Yeah, for you sure. know, and in the ten years of running around doing this, like it's really easy to see how. Um, for women, it's hard to, to feel like they can, not, not even the like real estate in general, but break into the investing side. Mm-hmm. And every time we see it, we just, um, last month, we just highlighted one of our investors, same thing, mom, entrepreneur, pushing, pushing, pushing. And we love this theme. We love this because you're right. Like there are things women can do that guys, like, I don't know if, if either one of us right now could run this business and have a kid and figure out how to raise it and do all those pieces. It's hard. And and it's and then you look at that, you take that and you go, here's the empire that was built. And then here's the empire that's coming. And that is incredible. And I and I I just wanted to understand, like, is that what's in your mind? And you, you said it, because you know, role models and showing people they can do different things, it's inspiring for everybody, right? It's not just uh, inspiring your daughter, right? It's inspiring it's for everybody to think differently. Like Michelle's a badass. She built an incredible business, right? And then you have to look back, guys, girls, men, women, you have to look back on yourselves and be like, man, I got to be just as good or better. And that is, is impressive. 
Yeah, and that's a big thing, you know, that I don't think people give enough. They don't, they don't give enough on that. They don't. And it's okay. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't do this for anybody else. I do this for myself too, right? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't take credit. And I, if anything, I give more credit um, to John and to the guys for the build, the, their well, growth being of humble, signature. Right? That's the humble part but of being it. being humble too is also really important. I think a lot of people lack that humility um, factor. And I think being humble, never, not, never forgetting who you are, where you came from, being a good person, treating everyone equal, you know, with respect, uh, because we've all been there. Like, so, you know, I, I just, that's, I don't know. I, success hasn't changed me at all. Um, I, I think, um, um, my, my husband and I will probably have a, <laughs> a battle when it comes to this. Cause you know, I, I cause he, you know, whatever I, he just, he sees it differently, but it hasn't changed the fact that I never, you never forget who you are. Right. And, um, and I think, I don't know. I think I have so much more respect for those that literally they come from nothing. They build something versus something versus those that are just given things to them and they don't know what to do with it. And they just, you know, I just, I have so much more respect for, for the hustle. Yeah. The hustle. If we, if we go back a little bit, so there's so many people that are listening or people that are interested, want to get to the level that you're at. And you were talking about being humble, remembering where you started. Mm-hmm. And I know again from before, you know, when you said when you were younger, People used to pick on you. You oh, weren't yeah. you weren't Michelle the way that people think of Michelle right now. Michelle was not, you know, so so many of you are Superman, are Superwoman, and you don't know that you are yet. And I guess what advice would you give them? Is it is it does it go back to that consistency, the grit, the persistence, the things we were talking about? Because and, and I think also surround your people, uh, surround yourself with, with the right people, people that are gonna bring you up and that have um, similar mindset. I think who you hang out with matters. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think, you know, I always wanted to be um, in my room. I always wanted to be, I never wanted to be the smartest or um, the richest uh, because I feel like I wouldn't be able to learn as much. So I think, you know, who you hang out with, um, who Mm. you're dating, who you're married to, like, I think that's so important, you know, um, uh, power of influence uh, is, is also really important. Proximity, power of proximity. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's an, uh, my advice, but also, um, you know, being determined, being passionate, um, hustling, never giving up. And I've, we've all heard this before. I'm not saying anything new. Um, I'm just talking from my experience. And I think with me too, is I've gotten so many no's and, um, and I think that just, dr- you know, it just, it drove me even more, even till this day when, when someone just you know, says, no, you can't do this, you're this, like, it just, it just, I don't know, I get more motivated by that, um, and I don't like to be, I like the challenges, it excites me, challenging, excites. like, I'm starting a new line, so Pie's Life, which you're probably going to talk about that, I'm sure. Well, tell us about it. Um, so Pie's Life is new, it, it's, it's a passion project, so when I was doing the show, the 24-hour uh, flip, I was the designer um, and the realtor on the show, and I got inspired by, by the show, I said, wait a minute, this makes me happy. I love decorating. Uh, I love creating. So why not have my own um, line of decor? So Pie's Life stemmed, started from that idea. And it was also stemmed from, you know, the, the, the boss wife where women, especially those that are, that are bosses, they, have, they run their own companies. Or there's just those that are working they're out there just hustling. They come home. What do you do? You're tired. You just want to put your hair up in a ponytail. You want to, you know, d- put on that comfy pajamas. And you just want to lounge. So the line stemmed from that, designed for the busy moms, the busy um, wives, the busy um, boss babes who just want to come home and just chill. So I, st- I, I, I did a um, a bedding and bath line. I'm starting with that. Um, sheets and um, comfy. I love, a, I love a good pair of comfy sheets. Comfy pillows and candles and oh, soaps and Where's, like, when is when is this launching? The, it's launching. Uh, it's it's actually it's it's in product. Everything's in production. I, I traveled like around the world to just source these products. By the way, because I'm very much into that. Like I don't want to just you know go online and white label anything. Like these were my actual products that um, we spent a lot of time um, curating. But it's going to launch, I would probably say, January uh, of next year. So around the corner, we're going to have a showroom, too. 
My apartment's going to burn down now. <laughs> With my the candles? W- my wife. Uh, I, I will go home every night and my wife will have 17 candles. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. You have to you have to send me your info. No, you're diffuse, gonna, no diffuser? No diffuser? Diffuser. Oh, you're going to... Diffuser's gonna, at night. I she like puts the it diffuser. on when she I'm goes a, to sleep. I love guy, candles. A diffuser. I'm a diff- yeah, diffuser, <laughs> candles, accessories. And then just the bedding. Oh, my God. Like, I don't know how you guys are, but I can't sleep if my sheets are... I need to... When I'm sleeping... Fresh. Fresh, crisp, comfortable. I can't sleep without making the bed. If well, my, yes, if my bed too. is unmade, I will make the bed in order to go to sleep. You will be more productive if you have a good night's sleep, right? I Absolutely. mean, so, you know, invest in your bedding. I was just going to, so how does Michelle stay sharp? How, what do you do to stay sharp? I know that you have just. I sleep in really good pillows. <laughs> <laughs> no, pillows are no joke. Is, are pillows part of the line? Tell me yes. Uh, they are, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Pillows are so, pillows yeah, might yeah. be one of the most important things. So sleep, sleep, sleep is very important. Sleep, what else? Minimum. Uh, how do I say shop? Sleep, coffee, caffeine. I do. I am caffeinated. Just tw- twice, twice a day. <laughs> um, no, so I I work out. I I just you know I got into like this wellness and health, and I'm really big on that now. So eating right, you know, I watch what I eat. Uh, I meal prep. Um, you know, I cheat once a once once a week I'm on vacation that's why I'm like <laughs> stuttering a little bit because vacation I can cheat um but no I do you know once uh one day a week I can cheat everything else I am all about eating healthy uh and then I I do I weight train I do Pilates I hit the treadmill like how do you sleep. how do you how do you fit all of this into in the one morning day? in the morning that's a priority you have to prioritize too guys okay. right prioritize so my health and wellness was never a priority to me ever it was work 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 and I just kind of just, it was never a priority. And then you get to a certain age, you're like, okay, well, why am I so tired? Why do I feel fatigued? Why am I so foggy? Um, and, you know, you got to take care of yourself, your mind, your body. You got to take care of that. That should be number one on my list. So right now that is number one, early in the morning, get it in. And then, um, you know, that's how I stay sharp. It's amazing how many people we talk to. And 20-year-old Matt, I'm about to be 35. It's amazing when they all told me when I was getting older, they're like, just wait, just wait till you get to 30, 40. And I'm just like, nah, nah, no. Nah. But it really is. Your body's different from 20 to 30 to 40. So would that be all these things that we're talking about, what you would tell the younger Michelle? Yeah, take care of your health. Take care of your health. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just take it for granted sometimes. I know I did, right? Um, but, and prioritize. I mean, I know this, I sound like, I'm doing a lot, right? But really, it, it sounds like that. It may appear like that, but it's really, it's just prioritizing. You know, having time for you, very important. Have time for you. Block off time for you. You need your time. Um, and then uh, everything else, you know, being a mom and the businesses and everything else, just just prioritize. So I have a question before we before we hit the, the even more things in the I Michelle Pai you said. Yeah, I got one more after you. So you, you just said something about prioritizing yourself and how you get everything done in a day. And we're going to bring up the classic Mike and Macho argument we have with all of our guests. Work-life balance. Oof, there's no such thing. Boom. That's what Mike says. If Mike, if Mike can high-five you right now across the table. Yes. There is no yes. such thank thing. You. No, but it's prioritized. You. So, you, so you're, uh, you're a leader. You're a boss lady. Love it. This, that just made me really excited. I, it's I an, believe there is no such thing as work-life balance. No way. You can't. How it can doesn't you? exist. No. But I mean, you were ta- sounds, sounds great. You were talking about, dele- well, I use the word delegate, but it's important for you to prioritize, prioritize right? Yeah. You have to learn to delegate, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's something that- I call it work-life integration. That's good. Because I like it, that one. Because they have to live yeah. together. Like, if you want to, like, you're, telling, you're teaching your agents to run their own business, and Matt and I run our own business here, right? We're on all the time. You're always, you're always, your brain's always um, going, yeah. right? Like your business is everything, you know, that ambition that you're talking mm-hmm. about is everything. And it's hard to shut that off too, by the oh, way. Wait, it's you don't, it's not like seven o'clock and I click. Okay. No. Right. It just no doesn't way. work. And I think everyone's like, especially young, younger than us, like all of us here, we're not, we're not that old. <laughs> Matt's turning 35 on 30s. Like we're not, none of us here are old and we're sitting here saying like, I'm hearing people younger than us saying, oh, you know, I need the me time and I got to turn off from work. I'm like, then whatever, all those things that you want, you're just not going to get them. Like if you, you need to figure out how to fuse these things together, prioritize. You have to do work. You have to have a good time. Life is about having a good time. Like none of us want to like, you know, look back after 60 years of life and be like, all I did was slog it out and do it. And 
But if you, if you figure out how to integrate those two things together and do something you love, which is what you said also, that's how you never feel that way. We, I wake up every day and I, I know that there's going to be something hard about, about something I'm doing today. I don't know what it is, but I, like, yeah, but I wake up in the morning, I go, I know it's coming. But it doesn't but matter because we love I it. I love it. But you want to know something? So when I started um, in this journey, my whole goal was at 40 years old, I want to retire. I'm 43. Right. I had like a vision board. It was at 40. So I was 21, 22 when I started. And I said, if I work these many hours, these many years, da, 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 I'll get this much. And at 40, I'm done. And I worked so hard those 20 years to be able to, you know, in my mind, think at 40, I just want to retire. Well, I'm 43. I'm nowhere near. I'm just getting started. But I burned myself out those 20 years because that's all I did. And I, and I remember, and I look at my mom and dad that this is all they did. And now they're in their sixties and seventies and they don't, I mean, they're like, their health isn't great. Um, they, they're not enjoying it. I don't want to be a seven, 70 years old and, and, and look at my life and just say, holy crap, like, where did it go? And everyone that I've met that's older than me, wiser than me has always said to me, you know what, you're doing well, you're working, but when you get to be my age, you know, you're going to regret not spending the time. Um, and, um, and I got to tell you, I think COVID, uh, has changed my way of thinking things. Um, you can work, you can still have a life and you know what, maybe you don't work those 12 hour days, right? It's okay. Um, but as long as you get it in there and also still feel like, you know, you have some, some sort of a life because that's, that's, you don't want to be 60 years old or 70 years old and just like, okay, I have all this money, but now I'm like sick or my back hurts or, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that anymore. So I don't know. I, I've changed a little bit. Um, I think my mindset on things changed as I, I got older and, and, and yeah, and had a baby that definitely, no, uh, I love it though, because I, I, I fight with my own peers about this, right? Like they're, you know, everybody, I mean, I don't want to throw any of my own friends under the bus, but I will. <laughs> Everybody, they all come to me and they're like, you know, you work too much because like, they'll call me and they'll be, what are you doing? I'm, I'm still, I'm working in the mm-hmm. office, doing whatever. And they're like, no, no, no. And I'm like, and then they're like, you need to find better balance. I'm like, ba- what am I balancing? Mm-hmm. I have a business. We're doing things. Like, mm-hmm. you know. And it excites you. I, it does excite okay. every day. It excites me. That's great. And, and you know, and I call it work-life integration. Of, uh, my mentor coined that once. I'll give that. I'll give Michael Klein, if you're listening, that's for you. But you know what I just call it? I just call it life. Like, like there's no, like, we, we, this idea, like, it's nine to five and then I'm out and I'm, I'm clocked. And I'm not saying you need to be on all the time. That, that's not it. But, like, you know, for me personally, you're talking about coming up from nothing. Like, you know, I started at Alpha. I made nothing. I had no idea what I was supposed to do here. I, I, no joke. When I started, Dave Hansel, one of our partners, hired me and he was like, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. 10 years later, Matt and I run the company and I'm the CEO. You work really hard. But I didn't do that because I clocked in at nine. I clocked out at five, right? If you're excited about something, you got to be in it. You got to be in it all the time. Well, so it's And then you pride. find, but it's, you find all the yeah, things but, you love along the way. But you, since day one, took pride and ownership of everything that you did. And that's exactly what you did. And you didn't have the brokerage right away. No. You were a realtor. Yep. And, then you, and then you said, I'm going to make this leap. I'm going to take this jump. And I was scared and fear held, held me, would almost held me back. Yeah, you yeah. said even your peers potentially could have influenced you not to do that. Oh, they were. They were like, you're crazy. Oh, my <laughs> God, you're going to fail. And the market's shifting. And what are you doing? But I mean, my took, family, my peers, like. And you yes. took your personal pride of ownership and everything that you do. I guarantee you when you go home, the car you're sitting in. Everything you do from start to finish, from the time you lay your head on the pillow, you take pride and ownership in what you do. And that's where uh, David Hansel and, and myself, we always say this, you are what you do in any, or the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm-hmm. And it truly is because you don't just change who you are when you do something else. You are who you are. I'm going to chalk this up in so my win cool. column though. Yeah. yeah. I love it when someone agrees with me. <laughs> so... Uh, we'll slowly start to wrap things up. Uh, Michelle, if anyone is interested in potentially becoming a realtor with Signature Realty, mm-hmm. where can they find you guys? Yeah, uh, SignatureRealtyNJ.com. That's our brokerage. If you want to get into real estate, we also have a real estate school, uh, SignatureRealtyAcademy.com. Um, yeah, and if you want to know about, about us. What about Pais Life? Uh, Pais Life is launching in um, in January, so I don't have the website up just yet, 
But I do have my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at the Michelle Pice, P A I S, at the Michelle Pice. And can we say, I, I've seen this online a lot, that Signature has the best um, real estate class going. Uh, it's the, yeah. it's like the Signature Realty Academy has, yeah. if you want to become a realtor, yeah. it's, it's the least expensive, yeah, the most bucks. comprehensive, mm-hmm. best class that you can get in New Jersey. And. And everybody's in for a treat starting in September. My husband, John Steingraber, will be teaching the class. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> that, Ooh. <laughs> exactly. Should I, get my, should I get my license, Mike? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I should <laughs> Let me tell you. And he is, uh, listen, I fell in love with that man from uh, the power of his words. So he's pretty powerful. You yeah. also have a book. Uh, I have a book coming out. I don't know when. It, the book has been finished for almost almost two years it's sitting there i'm just waiting for the right time um with the show and everything else and we've um you know we signed up with um entertainment talent agency so they just told us to hold off so i can't launch it yet oh. they're kind of in charge of that so we just have to wait and also, you'll have to have me on on the book follow yeah. the grams so when, follow yeah. the websites yes keep yeah. Yeah, everybody's got to watch out for this don't forget about a and e's 24-hour flip i believe yeah. saturdays are a lot of days during when you guys were premiering a lot of your episodes they usually air at 12 o'clock on Saturdays. Yes. Are they well, on rerun? Done. Yeah, they're on re- they're, We're done with the first season. You can but, check them out um, on demand. You can demand. check them out. You can check them out on demand on A&E 24 Hour Flip or on Hulu, uh, YouTube TV. Stream on Hulu? Yeah. All right. Yeah, just yeah. hit that voice control 24 Hour Flip and you'll I'm see. I'm old school. I actually watched it on TV. Me so too. I don't know that it was on Hulu. <laughs> actually, you want to know something? I didn't even, I didn't even watch it. At no. all? Uh, no. I it's mean, okay. I wa- no, no, because they would send us... Uh, they would send us some clips throughout, but when it was on, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even watch it because I was too busy selling houses at four o'clock on Saturday. My favorite quote was your contractor, where he said, "They're like, you can't do this," and he goes, "Listen, I'm from Jersey. You can do you anything. Can do anything. <laughs> I'm from Jersey." Yeah. All it's, right, no, that's good really good. Michelle, thank you so thank much you. for coming thank on. Thank you today. for coming during your vacation. Of course. How did he talk you into this? I know he did. I don't know. What'd well, you, you guys are alpha. I said I have to do it. My husband's oh, like, wait, why are you going oh, alpha? I didn't do it. It's alpha. You guys have been good to us. so. Thank you. We thank love you guys. Yes. All thank right. you so well, much again. Thank you very much, and everyone have a wonderful day. Bye.